If you're a wide-footed runner, oh, no, that sounds terrible, a wide-footed runner, where did I get that from? Hi guys, welcome back to Run For Adventure. I'm Lloyd Purvis, your host, and we are back with another shoe review. Shoe reviews are coming quick and fast over the next couple of months. Hope you went and checked out our previous review on the Hocker Rincon. We did a bit of a Halloween special, something a bit different. So if you haven't checked it out, please go along and have a look. And if you did watch it, I really hope you didn't have nightmares. But today we are reviewing the Brooks Cascadia 14. First things first, the Cascadia from Brooks was actually my first trail shoe many, many years ago. Obviously, a much earlier model. The Brooks Cascadia is a neutral trail shoe and it retails at 110 pounds. The Cascadia 14 has just been remodeled, so it's had lots of new updates. So let's fill you in on what them updates have been. The first major update is the weight of the shoe. So the previous shoe was a pretty hefty 337 grams, but the Cascadia 14 has been on a bit of a diet. So now the men's weighs 303 grams and the women's comes in at 269 grams. Another big change with the Cascadia is the heel height. So the 13 used to run off a 10 mil offset. The 14 runs off a slightly lower 8 mil offset. Also to change with the Cascadia 14 is the rubber that Brooks have put on the outsole. So the shoe now runs off Brooks's new trail track rubber. When it comes to the fit of the Cascadia 14, we've got a slightly sleeker design and we've also got this integrated saddle system to give you a bit more hold around your midfoot. When it comes to features that have carried over from the 13 to the 14, the shoe still uses Brooks pivot post system, which helps when you're running on uneven ground and the midsole is still made from their Biomogo DNA. The shoe still carries the Cordura mudguard, which is designed to help protect you from debris, but it still allows water in and out of the shoe. The shoe still carries the tongue pocket for your laces, which the 13 had, and we've still got this cheeky little gator attachment. The Cascadia 14 also comes in a Gore-Tex version. So that has given you a bit of info on the changes to the Cascadia 14. So now let's get stuck into the features that I liked about the shoe and maybe the things that I didn't like. When it comes to the fit of the Cascadia 14, I take a nine and a half in most of my shoes. Some of my shoes are a 10, but this is a nine and a half. It fits perfect. So the Brooks Cascadia is true to size. So the Cascadia 14, like we just said, has gone through lots of updates. And I basically think they were very much needed updates. The old Cascadia had got a little bit left behind. It was too heavy. It was too heely, too clunky and very unresponsive when it comes to today's trail running shoe market. So the Cascadia 13 was a shoe I probably would never have even put on my foot to run in, to be fair. When I heard of the changes, the fact they had changed the weight and the heel height, I was really interested in the new Cascadia 14 and I had to get it on my foot to see how it run. The two biggest changes in the Cascadia 14, the weight and the heel height difference have made such a big improvement on this shoe. It feels lighter, it feels more balanced, it feels way more responsive when you're running over technical ground. You know, it's a shoe you wanna put on and go running in. Again, changes to that rubber compound. The previous shoe was always a bit sketchy when it came to wet rock. This trail track rubber, way, way more grippier. Um, I've run on lots of different terrain in it. I've done a good 50 to 60 miles in it in wet and dry conditions, and I haven't had a problem with the grip at all. And as you can see in the midsole, the shoe still carries Brooks's rock plate system under the forefoot. I've got a reasonably narrow foot, so when it came to them slimming down the design of the shoe, it definitely fits my foot shape better than the previous shoe. 
They've also added this internal saddle system, which really does work well. It really locks you down into that midfoot. So if you're on uneven ground, you feel really well held and supported by the upper. Also with the Cascadia 14, Brooks have carried over this little tongue pocket to pop your laces up into. To be fair, on the previous shoe, it's really awkward and quite hard to get the laces up, but having used this one, it works and I actually really like it. I managed to use the Cascadia 14 in a couple of short 10k races but I also did a couple of longer runs in it and I found the level of cushioning reasonable. I wouldn't say it's a heavily cushioned shoe but it's not firm either and the level of cushioning and padding in the shoe gave you a pretty comfortable ride. As we said before the Cascadia 14 still has this cheeky little gaiter attachment. I've never run with gaiters, I don't wear gaiters, I'm probably never going to use gaiters so I can't really comment on that, but I think it's pretty cool that they put it in. But that's a bit of information about the shoe and the changes, how I felt running them 50 to 60 miles in the shoe. This shoe is definitely moving in the right direction. So let's get some Run For Adventure scores on the Cascadia 14. Number one when it comes to scoring at Run For Adventure is price. The Cascadia comes in at £110, which it seems like a pretty solid shoe. It crosses over, it's comfortable on road, it's pretty grippy off road, so you're gonna get lots of running mileage out of it. So I feel 110 is a really reasonable price for the Cascadia 14, so we're gonna give it a big fat round, eight out of 10. Number two at Run For Adventure is always comfort and performance. This shoe has performed super good. I've run it on lots of terrain, muddy, rocky, tarmac, and the shoe hasn't let me down on any of them. So I've been really, really impressed with the changes that have been made. Well done, Brooks, it's going in the right direction. This is definitely a shoe that I enjoyed running in. So performance-wise, again, it's, it's got a good score. It has to score high. We're coming in with another eight out of 10. On to durability when it comes to the Cascadia 14. There has been some issues with previous versions of the Cascadia. I know the 12s didn't really hold up to mileage at all. 13s were definitely better when it came to durability and they've carried a lot of them features over to the 14. So 60 miles in the shoe, the shoe's looking great. There's no signs of fatigue, the grip is holding up really well. So I think it's gonna be a shoe that we'll get lots of tough mileage out of. So again, it's the same score for durability. We're gonna give it another consistent eight out of 10. And as always at Run For Adventure, the last thing we score is looks. I'm sure if you've watched our previous reviews, you're pretty bored with me saying that. It's super subjective, it's your own choice and taste. When it comes to the Cascadia 14, the colorways, they're okay. I don't think they're terrible. It's a little bit retro looking and I personally think this is one of the stronger colorways. Some of the others are a little bit out there. So we're gonna mark it down a little bit on looks, but still pretty reasonable when it comes to the score. We're gonna give the Cascadia for looks a seven out of 10. So time for a roundup when it comes to scoring at Run For Adventure. The shoes perform well and it's been super consistent on points. So when we tally all them points up, the Brooks Cascadia scores a pretty impressive 31 out of 40. So with the scoring all done, we're gonna wrap this review up with a quick conclusion when it comes to the Cascadia 14. Like I said, I've been really impressed with the changes. Well done, Brooks. You've made this a much more enjoyable running shoe. I personally feel that 303 grams is still a little bit heavy. Yes, it's lighter than the previous shoe and it's way more balanced and way more responsive, but I would still like to see this shoe a little bit lighter. If you were a previous runner in the Cascadia or you've run the Cascadia for many years, I think you'll love these updates and you'll love these changes. The shoe just feels so much better to run in. If you're in the market for a new trail shoe, but you need a shoe that's gonna cross over to lots of different terrains, if you have to run a bit of tarmac before you get to the trails, the Cascadia 14 is definitely worth checking out. We've run it over lots of terrain and it hasn't let us down on any of them. So definitely worth giving it a try. We'll leave a link down below guys if you wanna find out anything more about Brooks Running or about the Cascadia 14, please click on that link below. We really hope you found this review helpful and it's given you a bit more insight into the Cascadia 14. If you did, please hit that like button guys, it really helps the channel. And also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It will keep you up to date with future content. As always at Run For Adventure, we love to hear your feedback guys. So if you've got any comments, please get them down below. Have you run in the Cascadia 14? How did you find it? 
do you feel that this is a big improvement on the previous shoe? That's it guys, another review done at Run For Adventure. We're working super hard at the moment. We've got lots of footage that we're working through, trying to edit to bring you guys new content. We've got kit reviews, shoe reviews. We're still going through the footage of our European road trip that we've got to bring to you guys. I've just found out that I've got a place at the Grand Union Canal Race for 2020. For those that don't know, it's a race that goes from Birmingham to London along the Grand Union Canal, obviously. It's 145 miles. It's a race I took on back in 2016. And to be fair, it was a bit of a pathetic attempt that I made. So super, super excited to be back in for 2020. It's the first race in the calendar for next year. We've got lots more races planned. And before the year's out, we'll give you an update on our race calendar for 2020. As I said at the beginning of the video, guys, please go and check out our last review on the Hocker on a, on a Rincon. We did something different for Halloween. We made a bit of a Halloween special. We think we did a pretty good job of it. It made us laugh anyway. So please go along and check that out if you haven't. And as always, guys, we'll see you with some new exciting content very soon. And stay safe and keep on running.